Good morning. My name is Brian Zadwarney. I'm going to talk a little bit about Google Voice API. Setting up Google Voice is very easy. Before you can use the API, you have to set up an account. So all you do is go to voice.google.com, log in with your Gmail account. If you don't have a Gmail account, then create one. Really easy to do. Once you log in with your account, you'll click the Terms and Privacy Policy. You'll be told that uh, you can either use a brand new number or you can use your current mobile number and port it over to Google Voice. I chose a brand new number. Uh, I was then told to put my cell phone number or another phone number into Google Voice so that it could associate the Google Voice number with my current number that I have. You will not take over your number. It'll just be a second phone number. Whenever you call the Google Voice number, it will ring to the phone number that you're putting in. So I put in my cell phone number and then it said you have to verify the phone. So I clicked call me now, it called me, I typed in 70 and hung up. From then I had to choose my own Google Voice number. Now they give you a couple options. You can enter your area code, zip code, you can enter a city name, and you also have the option of entering a word or phrase. So I played around, tried cloud, tried Harvard, HVD, couldn't find anything. I finally tried Zad, which is the first three letters of my last name, and I found a really cool phone number. So my new Google Voice number is 781-6565-ZAD. I came down here, clicked on that number, clicked continue, and I had a Google Voice number. It then took me to the Google Voice dashboard, as you can see, and I had an option to automatically block spammers. Now, I don't like spammers, so anything I can do to keep spammers from calling my phone, I'll do. So I did accept the option to automatically block spammers. From then, I had a voicemail in my account. I could read it, or I could click play right here and listen to the message. Now there's lots of tutorials about Google Voice. I'm not going to talk to you for 15 minutes about Google Voice. You can go to these tutorials. They sound better. They're better than my little PowerPoint presentation here. What I am going to talk about is the Google Voice API, which I couldn't find much online. So you can go to code.google.com slash p slash google dash voice dash java. It's right up there at the top. And you can read up on the Google Voice API. But there wasn't a lot. I kind of had to play around and figure some of this out. So I'm going to share with you some of my experiences. The first thing is the Google Voice Java API is found in google-voice-java-1.14-java6.jar, but that require requires that jar. I'm sorry, requires the Jackson 1.1.3 and the JSON.jar files. In addition, to make my code work, I used DOM4j, which you can download from the Google Voice link at the top of the page. I also found JTidy useful. I didn't actually use it in my final project because I had to cut it back for scope but JTidy will clean up the HTML, the XML that you get out of the Google Voice to make it a little easier to use. So first I opened up my Eclipse and I created a new project. I added my final project.java file and all the jars that I downloaded from Google Voice to the SRC folder of my new project. I then right clicked on my project, chose build path, add external archives, and I added the jar files from the SRC folder that I downloaded from Google Voice. What you're going to have to do is you're going to have to edit the final project.java file at the very top. You will see a public Stratix Sting username, put in your username, and put in your password. I already took my password out, so it won't work unless you put in your username and your password, and you must have a Google Voice account set up and running for this to work. Once you look at the code, all of my code is documented. It's probably better that you bring up your code while you're listening to me, so maybe you should pause it, bring up my code, look at it, and walk through it with me. But I'm going to keep talking. So, first thing I got to do is create my connection to Google Voice. You do that by creating a voice object. I called mine voice. From then, you do most of your own voice to interact with Google Voice. So, the first thing I wanted to do was figure out what my phone number was and save that in a string that I might be able to use later. So, voice.getPhoneNumber will return a string. I saved that in phone number. If I want to send an SMS message, it's probably just what about one of the easiest things you can do with voice. The command is simple, voice.sendSMS, and then you pass in three strings. The first string, I'm sorry, two strings. The first string is the string you're not going to call. The second string is the message you're going to send. So the person at 987-654-3210 is going to get an SMS message that says, this is an SMS message from Google Voice Java API. Creating a voice call is a little bit more complicated. The documentation is extremely lacking on this. And you're not going to make your phone ring. You're not going to speak through the speaker on your laptop. What you're doing is you're actually going to make your phone, cell phone, or whatever phone number you choose, ring. 
and then it's going to ring to the other phone number you choose and you'll be able to talk through each other. So the actual command is voice.call, you pass in a string of the formatted number, a string of the outbound phone number, and then the phone type. But figuring out what phone type isn't really well documented. So what I did was I wrote a little bit of code to figure out what exactly is my phone type. So the first thing I had to do was make a list of phones by calling voice.getSettings. I passed in false, which means don't download the new settings, just use whatever they were when you created these initially. And then I said get phones. That gave me a list of objects of type phone. I then walked through that phone list. For each phone, I outprinted, I outputted the index of the phone list, the name of the phone, the cell phone number of the phone, the type of the phone, and the ID of the phone. What I really care about is the formatted number, which is 987-654-3210, and the type of the phone. Now, this Google Voice account only had one cell phone associated with it. So you're only getting one output. If you have multiple phones associated with your Google Voice, which you can, you will see multiple phones out there, phones out here. I then can execute the call with the information I have here. You can just do voice.call, enter the phone number from your account, enter the phone number you intend to call, and then the type associated with the phone number from your account. So 987-654-3210 is a phone number associated with my account. 987-456-7890 is the phone number I'm trying to call, and 2 is the type of phone associated with 987-654-3210. When I execute this code, what will happen is first my phone, the one associated with 654-3210, will ring. About 10 seconds after that rings, 987-456-7890 will answer. So if you're going to use this code, be ready to answer your phone quick. When you answer your phone, you'll hear it ringing. You will hear just like you had made a phone call. When the person on the other end picks up, it'll be just like you made a phone call yourself. They won't even be able to tell it came from Google Voice, except for maybe the phone number that comes up. Getting to your inbox was difficult. The responses aren't exactly well-formed XML, but voice.getInbox returns a really strong, long string of characters. When you look at that string, you'll realize that it's XML, and it's a response with two different nodes in it. There's the JSON and the HTML. If you try and dig into the HTML and do XSLT on it, it's really poorly formed. So what you have to do is you have to go in, clean it up in your code, and then use XML tidy or JTidy to clean up the XML even better. What I was able to do is I was able to play around with the JSON a little bit. So what I'm showing you here is how you can interact with the JSON. The first thing you've got to do is you've got to download your string, your XML, into a document that you can work with. So this first line of code here, document inbox equals document helper dot parse text, voice got in voice dot get inbox, parses that text into a document called inbox. From there, I can take that inbox, select the single node that starts with JSON. So what I'll do is I'll get this node right here and I'll make that a node. We're still an XML node right now. So if we want to interact with this JSON object, we want to turn it into a JSON object. So now I create a JSON object by calling json.getText and reading that into a JSON object. I now have a JSON object that I can interact with like any other JSON object and use all my JSON functions against it. So what I did was I called a getJSONObject messages which will return all the messages out of the account still in JSON format. If I then print that messages out, what I get is this big, ugly JSON string. But if you know how to use JSON, you'll recognize that this is well-formed JSON, and you can just keep using your JSON operations on it to get what you want. You can pull it into a JSON array. You can export it to another web page or whatever you need to do with JSON. So today I talked a little bit about Google Voice. I talked about Google Voice API. I showed you how to send an SMS message. I showed you how to make a call. And I showed you how to check my inbox and see if I have any messages. This video will be available on www.youtube.com slash bjzadwor slash videos if you want to hear what I'm saying if you're just reading the slides.